wake your ass up it's the morning beer podcast grab your beer some chips and a cigarette and let's enjoy this motherfucking day hell yeah Welcome, 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 welcome to the More Beer Podcast. I'm your host, Derek, the nice guy, Rivera. What's going on, folks? I hope you guys are doing good. This is a bonus episode again. I'm doing two episodes this week, bro, just for y'all. Happy Friday, man. Happy Friday. You know, um, I hope you're having a great day. I'm going to go get my haircut later. Um, I hope, at least, I'm going to hit the guy up and see. Um, but I hope you guys are doing good, man. The reason why I'm doing a bonus episode is because last... Tuesday's episode, I went a little hard, a little vulgar, and I do like to apologize to my family and everybody for that as well. And it's not like because some of the things I, I do, is I do tell a lot of jokes, but I do I do love my family a lot. I just I love to tell jokes. That's just who I am, and I love to like you know I paint I paint the reality of everything, but I put it in joke form to kind of help me cope with stuff and also. Just to, you know, kind of get laughs out there. Because that's, that's one thing uh, comedians like to do. We like to uh, do a lot of that. And call myself a comedian. I'm not a comedian, you know. I'm just a goofy guy with a podcast that just points out the truth. That's all, all I am, man. And, but anyway, I hope you guys are doing good, man. Just, and the reason why I'm doing this episode is because I'm talking about a lot of the changes in my life. And I hope maybe it can, um, you know, help somebody. Uh, help, um, you know, just maybe help somebody out there. Maybe you know, just make someone feel better. Maybe someone's going through some some of the things as I am. And plus, like what the preacher said on Sunday is still resonating with me. And so you at church? Yeah, that's the crazy part. I, I think the craziest things about my life is right now is a simple fact that yeah. Uh, my f- two favorite places right now are Jiu-Jitsu and church. And you would have told me that a year ago, I would have laughed in your face. You know, I was never one of those guys that would want to go to church. You know, I did. I went when I was a kid, but I was never like I was never into that lifestyle. You know, I was never into the like is. Like, how do I put it, man? I was I was never into that. I remember some of my friends would, like, you know, convert to church and stuff like that. I'm like, well, that's good for y'all. Like, have fun with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's crazy how much your life can change in a year. Because last year at this time, I was on a crossroads. I was, I was either going to go a different path, but my body kept on, my heart and soul kept on telling me I should go this path no matter what. You know, and this whole year has been crazy for me. This whole year has been like 2023 has been a crazy year for me, man, because like I literally have been doing things I never would have thought I'd be doing. I never thought in a million years that I'll walk into a gym and step on a mat and roll with the guys that are like way better than me. I was terrified of that. I never thought in a million years I would walk into a church doors and praise God. Never in a million years. Never thought that was going to be me. I was always just drifting through life. I never thought that about myself. I used to see guys going to church all the time. I'm like, it's sissies. You know, like, like I ain't one of them, but really, I was a sissy. You know what I'm saying? Because I was scared. I was scared of it. Like, I remember one, one of my best friends told me, I'm going to start going to church. I'm like, that sucks for you. You know what I mean? Like, it really, I was really, like, it was me being a terrified little scary guy. You know what I mean? Like, it was, it was like, I was scared, bro. And, like, what are you scared of? But I don't know. I, I, I think it's human, humans, we're all scared of change. We're all scared of, you know, human nature is gases where we're scared of change and just terrified of, you know, like, like, What's in our head, which, you know, my homeboy Skyler calls it the inner bitch, but I call it the, and I call it the inner sissy, you know, to the sissy version of yourself, the dark, the dark sides, the, you know, they're always speaking in your head and they're always telling you, Hey man, don't do that. This is dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember like this last Sunday, I almost started talking about it, but this last Sunday I was going to go, I didn't want to go to church really. I was like, Hey, not going to go. And, you know, like, it's like, you can take a Sunday off, bro. 
you just started. They don't expect you to be there every day. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But then my buddy Josh, you know, dude I grew up with, he's also the pastor now. He hit me up and I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go. You know, and I had to fight myself to get dressed. Same with, this happens all the time with jiu-jitsu as well. Uh, just because I'm, I'm so accustomed to being part of my old life where I can just do nothing all day. You know, especially Sunday, man. I ain't going to wake up early. Well, come on, fool. It's Sunday. You know, and it's like, hey. But I went. You know, it's crazy because, like, what he was talking about that day, I needed to hear. I needed to hear what he was talking about. I think in my mind now, because he was talking about how uh, Moses went to go um, take the Israelites out of uh, Egypt. And then like in the middle of it all, when they hit the Red Sea and stuff, and they're struggling and they're going, why can't we just go back to Egypt? Let's go back to being slaves. And that's where I was in my life at the same time. I was like, why can't I just go back to my old ways? Why can't I do drugs? Why can't I get drunk every day? Just sleep. You know, just, you know, sleep with strange women. If you know, like, why, why can't I do that? It seems like it's funner. But it's not. Because there's a lot more bad times away after good times. They were trying to remember the, the bad times, you know? And... I was just and so, and it's funny how you said it's so crazy how we forget. And I, I was in that same, I was in the same shoes. You didn't know it, but I was in the same shoes, bro. And I think Brandy every day forgetting me to go into the church. You know, gee, my friend Brandy got me to go the first time I've ever told her, I'm scared. She's like, what are you scared of? She's like, don't you do that jujitsu stuff? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's easier, <laughs> you know, but really not. But it's, it, to me, it's like every time I want to change my life for the better, I get scared and I always stopped. And I was like, th and this whole year has been about me not wanting to change, and me wanting to change, and me getting tired of being scared, you know? But yeah, well, when he said that, I sat there, I was like, like, I feel like he was just talking to me, you know what I'm saying? And I was just like, and, you know, I'm selfish, I guess, but I, I just remember going, yeah. Cause I like e so easy, so easy that you think that you can just turn around and go back to the old ways, your old self, your old whatever. But never do you think that um, I don't. Never do you think that you can just easily um, how do I say it? Like just, just you know, like yeah, it's, it's always gonna be a struggle. That's what that's what the devil attacks, man, and. I believe that because I've been going through that a lot. Church is the first day I went back to church. You know, and I used to go to this church when I was a kid, I remember. And I used to, it used to be my safe haven, I believe, because I, I used to always enjoy going because I just let my guard down, you know. And I had great friends like Josh and Brandy and stuff like that in there. So, but I was just like, <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> um, and But when, when I was there, and then, you know, of course, after that, we had like a, um, like a free turkey giveaway. It was really cool because um, I saw a lot of people that I knew from the neighborhood. I saw a lot of people around and I remember just going, man, this is, this is awesome. I, I don't ever want to be, I don't like, I don't know, man. Like, I, cause I was, I was just so scared to go in there. And I remember being scared. I remember being scared to change in my life, and I, I was like, they're going to judge me, they're going to look down on me, and no one did, I saw a lot of familiar faces, like this man, uh, Brother David, Brother David's cool, like, he's the first one ever get us to go to church, I remember he actually, you know, got us to go to church when we were kids, and just just to see that dude again, and his smiling face was just like, and I prayed with him, and I actually understood what church was about, you know. When I was a kid, I never understood that. When I was a kid, I was like, I was always too busy wanting to go play and run outside or mess with things or cause fires and stuff. I never, never, never once in my life, I never wanted to 
be a part of, you know, anything like that. And then now it's just like, it's what I want to do. You know, it's like, I, a year and a, a year ago, you were told me, even eight months ago, you told me I would don't be going to church. And I would have just been, I would have laughed in your face, man. I would have just like, that's dumb. You know, like, a bunch of sissies. But, but I'm the sissy, bro. Like, I, I was the one that was scared. I was so terrified to walk into a building. You know, I, I roll with guys that are like 300 pounds. I roll with guys that are blue belts, brown belts, and, you know what I'm saying, like black belts. I never, but I was terrified to walk into a church. Because I was scared of change. I was scared of change. I was scared of, I was scared of like, change it for the better. Because every day a man is at his crossroads. You know, when I first moved back down here, I was still in love with so-and-so. She proved to me, once again, embarrassed me by, you know, pretty much another guy. Hey, he's better than you. Sorry. <laughs> you know, you're like, what? And so before I walked into jiu-jitsu, my whole goal was to die. Okay. That was it. That was my goal. I want to die. I want to live. I, that's the reason why I moved back down here. You know, I got to get my dog up. I got to get everything up. Might as well just die, right? And I went to jujitsu, gave me a purpose to live. But, and then through life, life, weird things happen. I started talking to my friend Brandy again. She's a good friend of mine. She, um, you know, she's always been a good friend, always been supportive. And one day she asked me to go to church with her. Well, one, well she asked me a week before that. And I was like, nah, I ain't going. Nah, I'm good. She said, were you scared? I said, like, no. no. Like, I didn't go to church, bro. And I thought about it all week. And I just wrote, I just, I just sat on it for a while. And then the next Sunday, I was like, I was, I couldn't make a dope mat. So she was like, you should go to church with me. I'm like, bro, I'm not going to church with you. She's like, you should go to church with me. I was like, okay, fine. I was like, I'll, 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 I will entertain you by walking in there, but I'm telling you, people are going to judge me, blah, blah, blah. No one judged me. There was a lot of people that bit, were there when I was a kid, and they walked up, and they shook my hand, and they're like, you growing up? I'm like, thank you. You know, and, you know, the pastor was there, and, you know, he remembered me, and I, and I was just like, and I was looking for my buddy Josh, because, you know, Josh is now one of the pastors as well, and I was, I was like, I haven't seen that dude in forever, and so the next Sunday is when I got in contact with him, and he took me to church, and I'm just like, and of course, that's when you know. It's, every it seems like every so far every week they have been talking about something that I need to hear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like um, they've been talking about something I need to hear. You know, and it's it's the weird thing about it is is that I enjoy this now, and I never would have thought I would have. And see, because you gotta understand, like when I left the church, I was fifteen. And that's when I started going down a bad path. I started, you know, smoking weed. I started drinking, you know. And well, I, I was drinking when I was eight years old, but um, not as much until after I hit when I hit fifteen. Is when my alcoholism really piped, you know, and did blow, whatever. You know, what I'm saying we, I was, I was a party boy. You know, I'd do whatever I want, and I was always that guy that was, you know, just just started going down a dark path, man. And you know, I wasn't like a bad person because, like, it seemed like to me, like I always had kind of morals because of the church and also because my mom too. My mom kind of beat those with me. <laughs> but like, um, you know, I always had morals and I always wanted to, you know, but I was always just doing whatever, man. Like I was, I was down to do whatever drug. I was down to do whatever alcohol. I was the guy at the party that had to show everybody I had to get drunker than everybody else. I was just to have more fun supposedly, but I'd always end up sleeping in the yard, pissing myself, throwing up everywhere. And I needed, and I was just, I had a chip on my shoulder too. I was, I was that guy. I always had a chip on my shoulder. I mean, my teens, I had a, the biggest chip in the world on my shoulder where I would try to fight everybody. And I would, you know, and, and I don't know if that was a result of leaving the church, but I know that was something that I, I had a battle with. And it took 20 years for me to walk back in there. 20 years, bro. 21 years, I think, too, because I was 15, I was 36. But yeah, 21 years. It took me to walk back in there. And once I did, it was like I never left. Once I did, it was awesome. 
I remember just um, like uh, on Sunday we had a little festival and I was there eating chili. They, they, they had like some good chili, man. And it was like well, the gator chili was so great. And so I had like two cups of that. I'm sitting there eating and watching everybody. And I was like, man, it's crazy how my generation these kids out there play. And now it's like, you know, we're sitting there hanging out, and watching the kids play and stuff and doing stuff. And I mean, I wasn't doing anything. I mean, everybody else was doing stuff. I wasn't. I was more like just, you know, being lazy. That's what I do. But no. <laughs> I remember, like, they, they still had, like, a little piece of land across the road where it's, like, Easter egg hunt, and then they had, like, um, they had, like, these bounce houses, and they had a bowl and stuff, and I was just, it was just such a great time, like, and it went by too fast, you know, and, but they were giving away turkeys for people, and that was really cool, I thought that was awesome, giving back to the community and stuff, and I never, never really thought of myself as someone that wants to give back to the community, you know, and, or even be a part of something. I'm never. I'm not that kind of dude, you know, or I wasn't. But I enjoyed it. I had a good time, and I was out there, you know, just chatting it up with all the dudes and stuff, and you know, just chatting it up and having a good time, walking around talking to everybody and stuff. And then um, I, I left, but I um, I don't know what it is about life when you hit the crossroads, and that's kind of what I want to talk about too. Because I was there. You know, I was like, should I go this way? And, you know, do whatever. Uh, and I had other opportunities. I didn't have to come back to my hometown. I, didn't, I had other opportunities. But it wouldn't have led me to the same place that I am right now. It wouldn't have led me to uh, where I could be right now, which is going to church and jiu-jitsu and working with my brother which has its ups and downs, but I, I could have easily, someone hit me up, oh, what's her name? <laughs> I, uh, it's Brandy. Anyway, yeah, I, um, I just, I, I could have easily went the other way, man. But someone was always telling me to come back home. And I didn't know what it was. Cause I wasn't really happy about it, you know, but it seems like when you're, it's, it's funny that I changed now instead of like later, but it's just funny how things happen, man. you know, cause last year you could have easily told me that I was doing all this and I was like laughing in your face. Shut up. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> whatever. But like the other night I went and worked out with Skylar What's going on, bro? <laughs> you know, and I'm still sore from that. I did a lot. I did some pretty good workouts with Skyler. We uh, we, we got some work in. And because we both couldn't make it to the gym because of our funds. But I worked out with Skyler. Then I went to see my dad last night or Wednesday night. And sat with him for a little bit and, you know, just – Enjoy life, man. Like, for once, I'm not going out to the bars. I'm not partying. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that, that life ain't that life ain't worth it, man. Like, that life ain't... Like, it's, it's good to have a beer every once in a while. Okay. But, like, you're out there at the bar every night. You know, like, it's, it's not worth it. Like, I, I'm at that age. Like, and, and I've, I've literally left people behind because of that kind of lifestyle. I'm I'm not that dude no more. I'm spending my money just to get wasted and you know, falling somewhere, and I'd, I'd rather go to church. I'd rather be in the church listening to the pastor. I'd rather be at jujitsu getting choked out by Steve. You know, what I'm saying I'd rather I'd rather be doing something like that instead of sitting in the bar, you know, wasting my life away. And I'm old. You know, I'm, I'm at that age now. Where it's like it's, it's no longer fun. <laughs> you know, but I, I um, but yeah, like. It's just, I just love the acceptance I got when I walked back into the church. I really do because it wasn't like um, it wasn't like you know when things were going on, and it's helped me realize that in order to be a good man, I gotta 
Like, I don't have to go to church, but like I, I gotta like change my lifestyle because like, I've done good things for a long time. I'm that friend that's if I got it, you got it, you know, kind of thing. I'm not gonna let you starve. I'm not gonna let you, you know, what I'm saying do without. If you're my friend. And I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out. But at the same time, it's like. You know, I, I needed something for myself too. I needed, and I felt good. Like, even just thinking that I could go to an uh, open mat tonight and, or, you know, and go to church on Sunday, I'm in a good mood. I'm, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel bad for missing church on Wednesday because, but I wanted to go see my dad too, and I wanted to help my dad out. So, it was that. And he's really sick. So, well, he's not really sick no more, but he's getting better, way better. But um, but I think I think as a man, you know, when when once you hit those crossroads, it's up to you, and you know you got to decide what the right thing is to do. I could have easily told Brandy that day I didn't want to go to church. Could have easily told uh, Skyler Jesse I never wanted to step on the fucking mat. I, I could have easily said these things to people, and I would have easily just you know what I'm saying just gone on my regular life just sitting around on my butt, you know, being lazy, gaining weight, um, being sinful, getting drunk every night. But I, I wanna become something different. And I feel like like my I'm I'm following my instincts now. Instead of being scared, instead of laying around being scared to try new things, try new things. You know, like now if it's like, you know, jumping off a building or something probably should be scared to do that. But what I'm saying is, is if like, you know, you're scared to change your life because you're scared what people think about you or you're you're scared about what, you know, about that you fail, that's that's not like that, that's not good. You know, I think you should easily, easily realize that uh life is more than just sitting around failing, you know. And if you do fail, then get back up. You know what I'm saying? Like life is like a, a big role in jujitsu. You can tap, but if you do, you got to keep on trying, dude. You can't just, you know, uh, give up, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, like a lot of people just give up and never come back. That's not me no more. See, because that's, that's the point. I was I always let my fear dictate for who I am or what I was going to do with my life. And I'd make fun of people for not not living the same kind of lifestyle I live, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you don't want to get drunk tonight? <laughs> what are you, scared? No, I was scared. You know, I was scared. And I was scared to change my life. And I was always at a, I've been in the crossroads for years. But I was always scared to go the good way. I was always scared to do something. Cause I was scared everybody's going to laugh at me. I was scared everybody's going to make fun of me. Oh, you know, and I don't give a damn no more. I don't care. If people make fun of me for going to jujitsu, I don't care if people make fun of me for going to church. <laughs> you know, I don't care. Like, <laughs> that's what I like to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's who I am. Now. It, it's crazy because, like, a year ago, I, I, I can't say that, but a year ago, I was not this guy. <laughs> I was literally did not care about my life. I didn't care if I lived or died. And my whole purpose was to die. But now it's, it's to live. And that's, that's something that um, I think everybody, people should realize is like, take chances, live your life. Because I'm telling you, it gives you something more to live for. I didn't think I'd have anything to live for. Because my whole plans was to get with old girl. You know, one day she'll see how much I love her. And she'll choose me over those muscular pretty boys. Yeah. She'll see how much I love her. But she did. She continually made a fool out of me for a long time. And when that last time is when it hit me, I was laying in this room afterwards, seeing her, just looking up going, take me, I want to die. And I did, but I woke in the next morning to somebody that didn't care, somebody that wanted to live life. Somebody that knew if I kept this person along with me, I would have ended up becoming a different person. I would have ended up becoming, like, what would happen the next, like, you know, so what would happen the next guy that she chose over me? What would happen? Would I end up hurting myself? Hurting him? Probably end up hurting myself, you know? And so she couldn't be the woman I want her to be 
So I became the man I wanted to be. And I'm becoming that man. I'm I'm going to be in... I was just like, watch this. And maybe my, my goal was to, the old me to die. But the new me to be resurrected. Of like a phoenix out of the ashes, man. You know? Or like like Jesus. You know, Jesus uh, rose from the grave. And I think that's what humans, a lot of us go through as well. We will be seem like in a tomb and then one day we just open up we come out like butterflies you know and just soar because we're, we're no longer worried about what other people think about us we're no longer ready for um you know so what she embarrassed me so what she picked another person over me. you know what I'm going to live my life instead of giving up. And that's the whole fruit point. Like, a lot of guys give up. A lot of people give up. A lot of people don't, you know, and I almost did. But if it wasn't for church or jiu-jitsu, I would have gave up. I think the only thing keeping me from not giving up now is going to church. And also getting that chance to go to jiu-jitsu. You know, I haven't, even though I haven't been in over a week. But what keeps me going is the simple fact that I can roll again. It's a simple fact that I can go to church. Praise the Lord. I know that God has my back. I know that he is here for me. And I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people, but like, like I know that. I know for a fact that he is. He has made me the beacon of light for my family, you know. And because, I, you know, life's a struggle, bro. You know, and but it seems like he He's been there for me, you know, and all through the dark times, because my 20s were all the dark times. It, it was dark, man. It was crazy. My 30s, I started to realize, and then, but now I'm at the point where it's like, yeah, I've been resurrected. It's a new man. Like, it feels weird. It feels weird because, like, and just wait. Just wait till I get more time on my hands. I'm going to be, you know, and I enjoy the gym. I enjoy life. I'm going to try to give me a membership at Jim Marble Falls. And I'm just going to start living my life, you know. I'm tired of what other people think about me. I'm tired of, you know, like giving up and failing. And I'm embracing change. That's what you got to do. That's one thing I think my biggest advice is to embrace change for the people, you know, for yourself. Because the ways of the world are always, you know, trying to, always trying to hold you in. Here, eat this bad food. Derek, you ain't got to go to church today. Like, yeah, you're right. Derek, you ain't got to, like, he has no idea how much, like, that's what I fight every day. And it seems like ever since I started walking on the path of the righteous, it seems like, you know, so, can't let it, you know, defeat you. Man. You got anybody out there is listening right now. You got to find some changes. You got to like embrace change. Embrace it, man. Embrace, embrace doing something. Embrace working out. Embrace, you know, saying if you if you um, feel like you should, I don't know, whatever it is you like to do, and you've been scared of doing it, just go do it. I'm telling you, bro, because I, like little steps in life, mentally you'll be terrified of doing it but if you once you get it over with you're like you feel so much better a little stuff like going to church or jiu-jitsu or you know what i'm saying or like um or just you know walking down the street jogging working out like i, I started working out with skylar i didn't want to do that i was nervous i was scared i had that that inner sissy in me going no you don't have to go work out with him zarek he's in better shape than you he's gonna be easier for him He's in bed, you know, like, it, like they're going to do, like, even his kid did better than I did, you know? And, it, like, instead of letting that shame and sorrow hold me down, I just turned around and just kept on doing it. And I didn't give up, even though I wanted to give up. Even though I wanted to fall down. And I wanted to just go to sleep. I want to say, well, this is good enough. You know, <laughs> I'm starting to burn a little bit. This is good enough, you know? But I, I, I worked out for him for almost two hours, man. And it was hard. It was so hard. I'm still feeling it. It's been a couple of days. Um, 
that's what um but that's what you gotta do. You gotta embrace embrace good change, you know. Not bad change, of course, but you gotta embrace good change. Embrace it. Embrace, like and don't go back to your old self. Like like what he was saying in church on Sunday really resonated with me when he was saying the Israelites were like, Hey, just take us back to Egypt, bro. You know, I, I don't mind being a slave again. I don't mind being a slave again. And, but they were because they hit hard times. And that's usually what happens in life. You hit hard times. Because I've done it so many times. Hitting hard times. Like, you know what? She don't want me. I might as well get high and drunk. You know? Before I know it, I'm back in the same slump. Back in the same old lifestyle. Back in Egypt. Just there. Just, you know, just, just existing. When I know there's so much more. It, I've given up and I failed almost everything and I've just given up. That's why, like, you know, and you know, when I heard that ser sermon on Sunday, I was like, that's me, bro. I'm the Israelite. I'm that dude that just keeps on, you know what? I go back to this old situation. I know it's horrible and almost killed me last time. But hey, at least it's easier in life. It's easier to be high all day. It's easier to be drunk all the time, stumbling around everywhere. It, it's 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 not easy changing who you changing yourself for the better. It's not easy, you know, walking the path of the righteous. That's not the easy path, bro. I'm telling me. Cause like, and there's so much temptations that the world throws at you too, bro. What about this? I know you used to love this, Derek. I know you love your your whiskey, right? You know, and just stuff like that. So it's like, I know you love to fight, yeah. I was interrupted, but like, it, it, like it's so easy for the world to tell you, oh, you love to fight people, you love to do this, you love to do that, you love, you love to get high, get drunk. Why don't you just do that instead, bro? You know, and you're like, yeah, that is the easier way. Like, you love, you love to, you love to not wake up in the morning, not not go to church. You don't, you don't like doing that stuff on Sundays. You, you know, you rather sit and watch football. Uh, yeah, you're right. I do. And you start to fall back in the old ways. In the old ways, before you know, you're you're back, you're you're back in the old ways, just in your old chains of life, slagging around, dude. Yeah, man. But I'm here to tell you that's that's not what it's about, bro. You know, but like when he he's preaching about that on Sunday, I was like, damn, that's, that's pretty dope because that was talking to me, bro. Like he was talking to me, bro. So what does that mean? You know what? What is what does it mean to hit a crossroads and just give up? What was that all that for? You know, what I mean, like I think everybody's life is worth it. I think your life is worth seeing what the next chapter holds. I mean, your life is worth actually escalating, evolving. Like you know, in Pokemon they evolve. Maybe they're screaming, but in Pokemon they, they evolve, you know, into like a different different animal, bigger and better. And I think that's what I'm trying to do for myself. I'm trying to evolve. I'm trying to become like, you know, a, a jiu-jitsu church-going bat, you know? <laughs> like, um, I just want to be that. I, like, I want to be a good man. That's my only goal. You know, I'll, I want to be... I want to be someone that... Uh, my family's proud of, God's proud of. And I want to live my life. I want to, I want to be able to live my life and know that it's not in by me doing something stupid or being on something or you know just like cause all my life I fought with addictions and stuff and it's like I don't want to go back to that. And the hardest moments is when you are walking on the path of the righteous, when he's in your face. When, when your demons are fighting you, your demons are like black belts, bro, and they're holding you down, and you don't know what to do, and you, you just want to tap. And you can tap, but just don't ever give up. Like, yeah, tap, kick a break, <sighs> but then go back in there. Don't give up, because life is like an open map, man. Life is like an open map. I think by me walking into the church, I found I unlocked some kind of secret. 
to life that every, all these people already knew. But it's for me not to give up. It's for you not to give up. All my listeners, you know, and I, I, I really do. I, I don't. Yeah, I haven't been to the gym in a while, but like I haven't given up. I just, I've been working on myself. It's been a battle. I've been battling with my demons, man, and I'm winning because I have outlets like jujitsu. I have like, you know, I sit up late all at night thinking about the stuff, you know, praying or whatever, and I have. The church, I have God backing me up, bro. God's like in my corner right now. Like, you know, when you go to a, a professional jiu-jitsu match, I mean, I've never been in one, but I've watched plenty. You know, when I was going to see my coaches fight, um, I especially like to watch Jesse fight. And when I go see Jesse fight, Jesse always has somebody coaching him. And that's kind of what God's doing to you in your life. You're out there right now in, in a mat, and you know, like a subdivision pro. It's your life. You're out there right now. You're fighting, and God's out there helping you. You know, telling you what to do. Hey, put them in a leg lock, arm bar them, arm bar. Them. You know, whatever. Like, and that that's what that's what's going on, and that's kind of how it, how life is, man. You know, and you're you're out there doing your thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I've always seen like a lot of my, you know, just I, I've always seen this, but I never know how to word it. I've never know how to word it, run. and there's always someone there coaching you or whatever. But like you can do it, you know. What I'm saying you, you if you're facing a crossroads right now, you know what to do. Deep down inside, you have to like that's what I did. I searched deep down because I could have stayed out there where I was at. I could have lived on the streets. I had lots of connections. Anything you need, if you know what I mean. And I could have easily done that. And just lived on the streets, man. If I got caught up with some wrong people. I mean, I was starting to become cool with a lot of, a lot of people that were... Um, now, there was good people in my life out there, too, like Lurch and stuff like that. But, like, um, you know, there were people I worked with, like Lurch, you know, Felicia, Miss Nelly, you know, saying Danielle. And Don and Marcus, of course. But there's also, like, a lot of people that were, like, I was meeting that were going, hey, man, come over here and hit this. Come over to this. Come over to that, you know? And I was starting to fall right back into that life. I was starting to go down the wrong path. But luckily for me, I decided to come back down here and, like, just, I didn't know what to do with myself at first. It was crazy. I, I felt like I was I was just going to die, you know? And then, and then I started meeting up with people. People that I already knew. That's the crazy part. I've known these people. I've, I've known Brandy. I've known Josh. I've known Skyler. I've known, you know, I didn't know Jesse really that much. I, I knew Jesse from his competitions and stuff and, you know, talked to him on the internet. But I, people I knew, they started to lead me to like a, a good path where it was like becoming such a great person. And like I remember thinking in my head, like, why did I, why did I never, ever hang out with these people before? I was thinking that, you know, and like, like I've known these people hundreds of times and just, and they were always there. And this funny thing is like, like, like much with Skyler, Brandy, and Josh all have one thing in common. I've known them since I was a kid. So got to do people in my life when I was a kid just to help me now, you know, just, just cause he knew I was, I was going to mess up, you know, cause, cause I'm dumb, but <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the kind of person that you need warning signs for. That, 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 that's the reason why warning signs were made was because people like me. You know, don't touch the stove, Derek. <laughs> you know, I actually remember that when I was a kid. Like, one time my grandpa was like, don't touch the stove. And I was like, I wanted to touch it. And he's like, well, fine, touch the goddamn stove. You know? <laughs> and I did, and I burned my hand. He said, see, what, what did you learn? What did you learn? <laughs> I don't know. Why did I want to touch it? I was throwing a fit. I remember that I wanted to touch the stove. And he was like, you're not going to touch the stove. And so I try to hold my breath. And he's like, hold your breath. You know? <laughs> but, like, you know, it, it's just stuff like that, you know? And I, and I think I think that's the reason why, like, another, another reason why, like, you know, the good Lord led me to the, the church now and the people that helped me get there 
and everything I'm into now because he knew I learned I, I learned the hard way. I'm not very smart. I, and the good Lord knows that. He's like, he's got to try everything before he comes back to us, you know. And I did. You know, I lived, I lived a crazy life before I came back. And, you know, there's gotten to fights, you know. The last fight I got into, allegedly, <laughs> you know, some bad stuff happened. I almost had to take the guy away. And I don't want to brag about that. I felt bad about it. I couldn't sleep for weeks because of that, you know. But, yeah, it's like he led me back this way because he knew I was hard-headed, bro. Like, he was like, he was, yeah, that's, that's Derek. He's, look, he's my friend. I forgot to give him a brain, you know. And I, you know, <laughs> the Lord's like, look, I forgot to give Derek a brain. You know, and kind of out there running around in circles, running, hitting his head on the wall and everything. Uh, just kind of spoon feed him for a while and let him learn the hard way. And that's what I had to do. And I think, I think it's like like when you're at a crossroads, you've learned the hard way. But it's either keep on going down the wrong path, bro, or just, you know, you know, let's just try this good path for once. I know, yeah, it's a little more rockier, bro. Yeah, yeah, you know what, the, the, the I'm at a crossroads, this, this, this bad path is smooth, bro. It's, it's smooth sailing. It's all asphalt. But asphalt burns your feet. Remember that. Okay? But this righteous path here, it's rocky, and it's hard, and it's that bridge that you have to cross. It's a little shaky, man. But the reward at the end is so much more beautiful, bro, than this path where it's all nice, but the reward at that end is like hell. Okay? And I um I, I never understood that. I never understood that. But I had to learn the hard way. This time it's time to go down the righteous path. It's another chance he's given me. It seems like the good Lord keeps giving me chances. You know, because I've been down that road, man. I've been down down the road where I didn't want to live no more. I've been down the road where I wanted to get high all the time. I've been down the road where I wanted to be drunk. And for some reason, I keep on getting another chance, man. I remember I almost, almost died. And if I would have died then, I wouldn't have ever realized this. And I never thanked the Lord for never thanked him for sparing my life. When I fell off that loader, almost got smashed. Never thanked him for sparing my life when that gun jammed. No, no. He knew I was thankful, I guess. But now, it's my time to show him I'm thankful. It's my time to show him that I'm not scared. Um, that it's, it's crazy, bro. Because once you start to realize stuff, once you get older, you you realize being that dude is not what it's about no more. You realize getting fucked up ain't what it's about no more. It's just it's just not about that. You know? And it's crazy that he's given me so many chances and led me back to the church, led me back to where I started from. Pretty much. Just that I have a different outlook now. Now now I'm more advanced than I was. You know, 20 years ago when I left that church, 21 years ago, um, when I was 21 years ago, I was right in that same spot, thinking, I don't know if this is for me, but I knew it was, thinking how thankful I was for church, but at the same time, I was going to the party and have fun with my friends. Then on Sunday, I was standing in the same spot. Thinking how thankful I was to be alive, to be back in that same spot that I was 21 previous years ago. It's a lifetime. That I was, and I'll stand next to Josh, probably the same person I'll stand next to 21 years ago. And I was just thinking, dang, this is awesome. 
You brought a tear to my eye for a second. Because I'm like, bro, like, what if, what if this is what it's about? You know, like, what if, what if you have to, like, like, you know, he, he really, God literally showed me that, like, I had to, like, freaking literally learn the hard way because I'm dumb. <laughs> I was not smarter than everybody, you know, and I am, I'm, like, I still believe I am one of the greatest minds of our generation, but that's just also an alter ego as well, but it's like, but what, what, what if, man? I don't know, bro. I, I you know, but like, it, it is what it is, man. But it's like, you, you think about it and, you know, now when I'm sitting in church, I'm not thinking about leaving. I'm thinking about, you know, what they're talking about. I'm comprehending it. I'm studying. I still don't even own a Bible, bro. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. I guess I could buy one. But I don't even own a Bible, bro. But I just know. I just know that. And I know if you're a man at those crossroads, bro, people, some people will never understand this podcast. Some people will understand. Some people will understand the fact that I am trying to show you what you gotta do. And I know that rock path is not as fun, bro. Since you're you're not gonna have much fun. People, your friends are gonna laugh at you, you will reject you, but you will in the end it's when you get to relax. And they talked about this a lot when I was a kid. I never comprehended it. I remember in Sunday school they would talk about something. And I was always like, what are they talking about? I was dumb. But little did I know, I was going to live that. I was going to try to live that. I was going to buy everything in the world in error. And it seems like the right path, bro. And I feel good about it, man. Like, I actually feel confident about something that I chose to do, and I feel I feel happy. You know, like I, just just the thought of going to church on Sunday, just the thought of going to jujitsu on Friday. I'm just like, you know, just I feel good about myself. I feel happy. I can't wait to see the people. I can't wait to like, and, and I hate people, but like, I can't wait to see the people. I can't wait to just be happy. I'm not, and I'm not the holiday kind of guy. I'm, you know, and y'all heard the podcast before. Like last episode, I was cussing and raising hell, man. I was talking about the devil and stuff, and I was, you know, and I was yelling, bro. I was, I was, I was in a mood. I'm not saying that all pod, this podcast are all gonna be like this one, but at the same time, I'm not gonna say they're all gonna be like the last one either. And I just want to um, help enlighten the world a better way, because once, like. And people are gonna like hate. They always hate. Like when you change your life for the best, the crazy thing about it is someone there's always gonna be somebody gonna nicker in the back. You know? <laughs> Why would you do that? I was that guy because they're scared. Don't blame them, just pray for them. Because they were scared. You know what I'm saying? You ask you ask Brandy when she went back to church, I was like, good for you. You know what I'm saying? Good for you. Like, but little did I know, I was going to go back to church too. Little did I know. She didn't know she was going to get me to go. I didn't know I was going to go. The Lord works in weird, mysterious ways, bro. One sec. Sorry about that, guys. Microphone acting crazy. But, yeah, man, like, it, it's, it's, it's the simple fact that you know and I was that friend bro I was that friend I was making fun of people I was like I was laughing I'm like why would you want to do that fool shoot I would never do that fool not me not me I'm real yeah you're a real idiot that's what you are you're an idiot but I'm real fool but and I, know, I know a lot of people that don't believe in God there's just more to it out there, man. There's there's more to it out there than just just saying that you believe. And if you don't believe, cool. 
But I'm telling you, there's so much evidence out there that he's alive, man. It's because I'm, I'm evidence. I'm proof. I'm proof. A lot of people are proof. Man. I know a lot of my friends that went to the same journey I did <laughs> back in church. I know a lot of people that didn't. I, I pray for them. You know, I, and I, you know what the craziest thing was though. Like, I was going to get this out there too before I, before we close. Um, as a as somebody that's been at the crossroads, I I encourage anybody to try anything different. Angels are the best, and for the good. Don't go out and do math. Oh, <laughs> Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? But like, like, but if, but if you have a friend that's like, hey man, come to church with me, like, try it out. If you don't like it, that's not you. Okay, cool. Everybody's different. Um, but I think I unlocked the secret of life, which is just enjoy life. Walk with God and enjoy life. Because you can still enjoy life. You know what I mean? Like you can still enjoy life by and still be going to church. You, like just the warmth of it all, you know, you still enjoy life, you don't have to be, you, you know, people think when you go to church, you're like a stippler, or like no man, like, you can still enjoy life, you can, they, they have music, they have, you know, good times, and, you know, like, I go to jiu-jitsu, there's, you know, stuff like that, like, you know, and it's not hurting nobody, work out, try to better yourself for, for whatever, man, you can still enjoy your life. I'm proof of that. You know, you might just, I mean, I'm not saying go, go out and fucking get, get messed up every day. No, don't do that, bro. Then pray every Sunday. That's weird. But, you know, like, just, I, I think you can enjoy your life and still go to church and still, still be happy and not be able to, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, if you're ready to change, that's what it is. And if you're at the crossroads, you know what I mean? Because everybody hits it in their life. Men, women, you know, whatever you are. Everybody hits it in their life. Everybody, everybody's going to everybody's gonna find a way to... Uh, and, and there's always that voice in your head to tell you, don't do it. It's easier to go down this path over here, man. It's, it's, you know, look how much fun everybody's having. Oh, that righteous path. They don't have that much fun over there. They're, they're, they're you know, they're, 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 they're they're not out on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd rather go to open that on Friday than a bar anyway. But, yeah. But I do think one of the saddest things, though, was like on Monday when we were at that church thing, there was somebody that used to date one of my friends. It was my friend Jay. And this lady walked up to me and asked me, he's like, How, how's Jay doing? And I was just like, I always hate being that guy that has to bear bad news, you know what I'm saying? I, always, I hate being that guy. And I'm like, he passed. She said, what? Like, yeah, he passed away, you know? And she said, oh, yeah. That kind of brought my mood down a little bit, but like, other than that, it was all right, you know? She's like, I'm so sorry. I was like, hey, it's cool, bro. Like, I, I know for, ever since he passed away, you know, I try to use him as an excuse to mess up my life worse. I didn't have that right. Because I know he wouldn't have condoned half the stuff I was doing. But I'm glad to actually turn my life to something better, a brighter path. And I really hope I don't ever go back to the way I used to be. And it's easy. It's easy. You know, it's it's easy to go back to the way you used to be. And yeah, um, I still might talk about conspiracy theories here on the podcast and stuff like that. I think that's one thing we're gonna keep on doing. Um, but it's I'm gonna try to tone down the 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 demon talk, I guess. Um, but yeah, like man, I just never would have dreamed I would have been that guy, you know. And thank you everybody for listening. Uh, follow me on YouTube at Rip Air Productions, and of course we have it. You know, I'm still selling myself on the internet here. Like, listen to me. Um, eh, you know, don't have to follow me. You know, I don't care. You know, but talk as well. Diesel Lucia, 007. Um, 
yeah, man. Like, so you gotta just enjoy life, man. Like, and, and don't become like, just enjoy life. Don't worry about what they think. You know, because there's always have, someone that has something to say about your path. Meanwhile, they're stuck in the same rut. They're stuck in a hole back there. They're in a ditch. <laughs> you know, hey, you have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. For, oh, um, podcast, of course, will be on. Join me on Tuesday for the Morning Group Podcast. Um, and also join me. Um, I'm going to try to make it, you know, I'm trying to improve these things. But thank you for listening to the bonus episode of 160. Yeah. You know, and thank you for listening to that bonus episode. Last episode was crazy. I know um, I I was going off. I was mad, dude. I was mad, dude. Like, YouTube continuously tries to ban me. You got to realize we're living in the in the past tense, or we're living in the, the end times when YouTube, not YouTube, but like when internet and everything in the world is saying all the bad stuff is good and all the good stuff is bad. You know, I had a friend of mine the other day, he tried to post about Jesus. He got community standards against him. But of course, there's men and when dresses twerking on the same site and they don't get nothing like that, bro. They they get they get uh, more views. You know? So like, shout out to Facebook. So that's just how it is. And I really hope that we can really, really you know, what I'm saying just just do your thing, live your life, be happy, and don't worry about what other people think about you. Because at the end of the day, they ain't worth it. They're really not, bro. They kind of suck. <laughs> nah, I'm just saying. But like, yeah, man. Like, and if you you feel like you can go back to church, do it. I feel like I unlock something in life, man. I th- I feel like every time I do something new that I was scared to do in the past, I've unlocked a new door opened up for me in my life. Simple as that, man. So y'all have a good one. You know, what I'm saying, don't go back. To, uh, never go backwards in life. Always go forwards. Always look forwards. That's the reason why you don't have eyes in the back of your head, bro. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Now you turn it off.